Now let's fly. Take one. All right, what's up, guys? This is your boy JDV. I'm here with my co-host out here, Gabe Norwood, uh, stateside, stateside in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Yes, yes. Right. We back at it. Another, yeah. Another episode of Let It Fly. Uh, just coming out, got the family out here at the park. Just reliving some some memories from our childhood, how we came up playing the game, uh, getting introduced to the game. Yeah. And uh, you know, with that said, you know, Joe, for you, when when did basketball start for you? Like, was it a park setting? Was it organized? Like, how did the game find you? Oh uh, no, nah, for sure it was it was for sure a uh, park setting. Yeah. Um, I, I would probably like to say we all kind of started at the park, right? For the most part. Yeah, yeah. We started off at the park growing up. What 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 age were you when 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 you started? Shoot, my, my dad probably started bringing me to the park right around maybe like six or seven. Six I mean, or from seven. what I can remember, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. Uh, a lot of times it was, you weren't allowed to play play on the main court, right? You had to watch all the adults play. Yeah. You know, get off the court when they were when they were ready to start. So yeah. you just gotta maximize your opportunities. And once you're old enough, I think maybe ten or eleven when they actually let you run. Get a you, bit. yeah, yeah. Run with the adults, with the yeah. big, with the big fellas. And they don't take it easy on you. That's oh no, no. Nah, nah. You know, one thing for me is, you know, my dad was military. Yeah. So we we, uh, we played on base on the army base. So that was grown men. And for real. oh yeah, no, nah, grown men for real. And 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 they were fighting. And they didn't care if you was a kid or not, you know. Um, so I had to, I learned, I learned playing basketball with the military guys, and they did not play. I mean, but it, it was the same military on yeah. base or or at the park. People didn't, adults did not care if you on the court, you're on the court, right? <laughs> so, honestly, I think. Would you say it's a little bit more softer now on the kids, or what? What do you think? I don't know if, if softer is the word. I think they have so many opportunities uh, to work on the game. There's so many, like, I don't remember when skills trainers even came around. You know oh, I mean? oh, yeah, like, no, no, have, no. We didn't have that. It was kind of figure it out on your own. There's yeah. a little bit natural, like, creativity to the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's softer because if you look at kids now, they're so skilled. Like, yeah, No, they're crazy all skilled. All these kids can pass, dribble, shoot, you know. Both hands. Both hands. Yeah. I didn't learn my right hand till last I think yeah last year. yeah like my last year of, of the PBA you know what I mean <laughs> I probably and I still didn't use it <laughs> that was a weird thing for me growing up I was always stronger going to my left yeah I'm right-handed but it was always like people thought I was left-handed so they would force me right yeah 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 they would throw people off when I was a kid <laughs> That is kind of confusing. Yeah. I still don't understand that. Like how, you know who was like that? Sonny Thos. He was better going to his left. He was better going to his left, but he was right-handed. So it's like, what way do you, what way do you force somebody if they like doing that? Like, I mean, that what? just comes down to knowing your opponent, right? Yeah. Bringing our kids to the park is, is like a full circle deal, right? Like it feels, it feels like it's kind of like I'm playing at the park, watching our kids, right? right? Kind of bringing back old memories and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think I think the park, the cool thing with the park is like, you have to respect your opponent, mm -hmm. right? You gotta respect your, it, you don't know who's walking onto the park that day. It could be an ex-pro, it could be a high school coach. Yeah. It could be just a guy that loves hoop and yeah, he's gonna yeah. play super hard. Yeah. So it's one of those things you never know your opponent, but you can go out, you can get better. like. Oh yeah. Every day, it don't matter. Oh yeah, you go into the and they they're gonna force you to compete too. You can't just go to the park and then not show up. That's why you gotta you're gonna get prepared. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna get <laughs> cussed out or some or or just punched <laughs> or pushed. Something's gonna happen at the park for sure. Yeah, just just like what happened right now. Something something's gonna happen at the park. You know what I mean? Now that you're here in Los Angeles watching your kids play here at the park. What is your, do you have any any wishes for them 
uh, like what what do you see in them? I mean, at the end of the day, I just want them to to do what they love. Like you know, that's a that's a nice thing about being stateside is the seasons, right? You can you can play football one in the fall, turn around and play basketball in the winter, and, and have all these opportunities because I know they're into a lot of sports. They watch mm-hmm. everything. Um, you know what? I your kids are on top of it. Yeah. They know sports like they know sp- more sports than, than me. Like they're they're serious. All the players, yeah. the lineups, everything. They can't tell you a superhero, but they'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. For the Clippers. That, exactly. That's what's kind of <laughs> honestly, man. That's what's kind of cool. So even even if your kids didn't, I mean, it'll be nice if they did play professional basketball. But even if they didn't, I really see them in sports regardless. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, j- just because of their knowledge and uh, of of rosters of. They talking about trades and I mean it it's crazy the knowledge they know man it's it's wild cuz I know my kids don't they don't know none of that but they enjoy to play the game yeah and but after that that's where it kind of yeah that that's where it kind of ends they don't really watch the game yeah. or nothing like that it's 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 almost I don't I don't even want to say natural because I have to force them to play <laughs> you know what I mean I wish that my kids and maybe they'll get there yeah they'll get done. yeah like they have the knowledge they have the love for it to where they really want to study it right 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 and understand it like how your kids do you know what I mean right and I think I mean all that comes in time you know what I mean the yeah the <laughs> there's there's always different pros like even at the pro level you got guys who go home and study the game I know I'm sure we both have teammates or even myself I watch a lot of yeah them. yeah yeah we did that yeah but then you also have some teammates who are like all right this is my job mm-hmm. my work day is done let yeah. me go do something else yeah yeah, yeah. it's all what, what gives you peace of mind yeah what, what kind of kind of frees you up to be able to turn around and, and be back in the gym the next morning yeah you know, practicing every single day off-season workouts and, mm-hmm. and putting your body through those things so i mean i think the foundation of that stuff is set here yeah you know i know i don't i don't remember having him to have my dad tell me come on we're going to the park today like that's just how i was I oh wanted, yeah no we're going we're, at, we're going outside, at the park yeah to, yeah and it wasn't just basketball you know you had the baseball field over here playing like home run derby with a tennis ball and a bat you know what i mean football, like, football flat yeah flat, ta- football, yeah tackle football, yeah tackle whatever. yeah two-hand touch yeah yeah it was oh, whatever. Shoot. so it was it's the park man and yeah it's an opportunity just to even make friends like yeah you got people from different schools different communities coming out yeah no nah, and that's true man it, it, it's kind of cool because everything started at the park yeah that's what's cool and and I know one of my uh, best stories is I mean I of course I wasn't a lights out shooter yeah but I like to give a lot of credit to those double rims right those double rim parks double rim chain net chain net uh, oh the, but nothing sounds better than the double the chain, chain all net, net right <laughs> who ain't nothing sound better than that <laughs> yeah so um, getting back to things we, we've had little discussions before in terms of like you know how you started playing playing the game and, and things like that. But what's your like earliest like basketball memory? Like whether it was like walking into a tryout, your first win, like mm-hmm. the first time you remember like scoring, whatever. Like what was your earliest basketball memory? I would probably say it was my first dunk. I believe in I want to say seventh. I was in seventh grade. But but it was at the park. It yeah. was, you know, we're playing at the park. So it might not have been 10 feet? No. What? I mean, the park, you know, you never, I think, nobody No, 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 I played nothing but 10 feet rims. Eight, sometimes <laughs> higher. You know, the, the park sometimes. Yeah, be a little school, bit lower. Little yeah, bit yeah, yeah, about nine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get me <laughs> on a nine foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, all, all my uh, hoops were all uh, regulation. Regulation yeah, yeah. before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was seventh grade? Yeah, seventh grade, uh, mid- hey, Ross seventh Middle grade. School. Yeah, seventh grade, dog. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I'm trying to tell you. Seventh Went grade. back in my younger days when I had good knees, I could jump. But then my knees just, they just got real yeah. bad. Yeah, they got bad quick, real quick, real quick. Like, kind of, I had like Gabe Norwood legs, kind of, you know what I mean? Kind of springy a little bit, you know what I mean? A little bouncy. Up, up yeah. on your toes? Yeah, yeah, up on the toes. I had Gabe, Gabe Norwood up on your toes knees. <laughs> up on your toes knees. <laughs> knees over toes? Yeah. 
<laughs> See, that was before that was famous. Right. I made it famous. You was doing knees over toes. Yeah, too? knees over toes. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Great. Yeah. How? What? What would you say? What was? What was your earliest memory of basketball? I mean, mine was more so the setting. So I remember. I think we were living in. Uh, my dad was coaching at the University of Arizona. Mm -hmm. I think it was Arizona or at the University of Richmond. Did you ever play on like the carpet courts? Hmm. Like they had carpet, like gym. So like I don't know if I've at my school, this. at the time, or the school we were playing at, like the cafeteria doubled as the gym. But they had carpeted Oh yeah, floors. yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking so about I now. I, I couldn't have been more than like eight or nine years old playing like with a little YMCA ball. Mm -hmm. like, I just remember wearing... I had sweatpants on one. I was hooping in sweatpants. And then we were playing on a carpeted court. And I have a picture. Like, I'm sliding, doing a crossover yeah. on this carpeted court. I'm talking like shoes sliding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I don't know why. Like my, I feel like that was the first time I picked up a ball. Yeah. So like carpeted outside of the park or like just playing around. That's where the love came right, right. there, the and carpet. Play on carpet. The cafeteria carpet the cafeteria basketball court. carpet. <laughs> Basketball court. That was it. As soon as you said cafeteria, then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. We had one of those. Inside. Yeah, yeah, we had one of those. We had one of those for sure. Let's get to the nitty gritty real right, quick, okay? I want to know, you've played how many years? 15? 16? 15 going on 16, I think. 15 going on 16. Is there any retirement plans in the near future? Ooh. -hoo. Ooh. I mean, you got to be realistic, right? Like, you can't, you can only play the game so long. Yeah. Um, at a high level. At a high level, at a level that you want to play at, right? right like, right. I, I mean, I've been blessed, you know, knock on wood, uh, to make it this far in my career with no serious injuries to where I can kind of keep myself in shape, keep myself available. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's. It's basketball, man. Mm -hmm. It's a young man's game. The PBA is getting younger. Yeah, it is. Uh, I like to see, think I still have value, you know what I mean, in terms of leadership or still being able to get out there and play. But, yeah. I mean, plans, just take it a year at a time, man. That's, that's all I can do. Uh, I don't want to just be a guy on the bench, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to still contribute. And once I feel like I'm not contributing the way I I think I can or yeah. I want to, yeah. then it's time. Yeah. See, and that's where... I mean, how I, uh, how things retired for me was, you know, didn't go as I planned. Right. But, you know, that's life. So it's, it's all good. Yeah. But, but now that I am retired and we're here in America watching my boys play basketball, watching Bella play volleyball. Yeah. And seeing how much they grew just being here in America, it, because, to be honest, I probably would have. I mean, my wheels fell off. They gone. They been gone. You know what I'm saying, yeah. Gabe? But I probably, yeah, they, it spares. The spares would have been gone. Uh, sparks and all that would have been flying up. Like, you know, I really would have been playing till till everything. I ain't got no doors. Everything gone. You know what I mean? So, um, so I still... I'm thankful how everything played out, you yeah. know what I mean? But it, I'm t Gabe, I'm telling you now, brother to brother, dog, if when plan, plan it, plan your retirement properly, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and once you get here, just know, Gabe, that the Devances are always here for the Norwoods. Always. That's All right. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know right, what I'm saying? I'm actually excited for you. You know what? I'm going to go out there to the Philippines on your last game. All right, you just let me know. That, well, that's not a promise, but I'm going to try. You got to get permission first. Yeah, yeah I, I got to get permission first. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I'm going to try. So on your last game of retirement, I'm going to try to be there for you, all right? Respect that. I all right. appreciate that. You know, we touched on our own stories, like our own experiences growing up in the States, playing ball, the influence of the park. But this is one question. I think we've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. But who are a couple players that you met in the Philippines? That could be locals, other Philams. Actually, we'll stick with locals. Who are some locals that you think would have benefited a lot from playing, whether it was high school, some level of basketball here before going to the PBA? Like, I have a couple Ooh. guys in mind who I think if they, they already had great careers. Yeah. Guys who 
we both played against. It's two guys that always come to mind for me. Oh, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll see what you say first. Oh, shoot, but that's a good guys, one. Okay. I'll, hold on, I'll say one to get it started. Okay, yeah, okay. JC and Todd. Oh. Because I feel like if JC, I mean, JC's super athletic. Right. Can shoot it, you know, put it down enough, could defend, jump out of the gym. Yeah. But I feel like if he had guys of the same level in terms of athleticism, strictly athleticism, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the daily, like yeah. day in and day out, yeah. and knowing how competitive he is, I think he his like JC and Tom is a good could, one. JC could have played like D1. In the yeah, season. yeah. I really, I genuinely believe that. Honestly, j j just because you said J, I would probably say Elaine Malixi. I mean, he. A natural bucket. A natural bucket. So imagine him coming out here training. Mm -hmm. He would have got bigger. He would have got stronger. He was already crazy athletic, too. Yeah. I mean, he was just as... Yeah, yes. before he got hurt. Crazy athletic, right? Ooh, that's a good one. I never thought of Elaine. Elaine. Elaine Malixi is a good one. I got I'm, another one. Who? Who's another one? Who's another one? One of your team. I'll go, I'll go younger. So I got... I went with... I usually say JC and KG. Okay. Oh, KG. Oh. I, those are the two that always come to mind. Just yeah. off of that athleticism. That, that's what I was going to say. Is, do, is it because of their athleticism? Yeah. Because I, like naturally, if you're athletic, you you can get away with enough over mm -hmm. the course of your career. Right, just being right. more athletic. Than yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like those two guys were just so rare in terms of athletes. Yeah. I mean, I could be completely wrong. I didn't watch their um, college careers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I just feel like the way they compete too. I know how hard they compete and how yeah. hard they play. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if they had every single game. There's somebody just as, if not more, athletic than them. Yeah, and push them. And every push, oh game. man, they. It, it would have been nice. I mean, MVP. Like they would have been. They would have been. I mean, Elaine had some great before coming to. Uh, before coming to was it B Meg? He was he with us at B Meg or was Coffee. it Sammy Coffee? I don't know if he ever played with B Meg. Yeah, I mean he was he was killing. There's a lot of 30, 40 point games, I believe. I mean straight yeah. bucket, right? Um, K, the K, KG was really was really really. He was I, a different athlete. Yeah, no, he was he his whole career he was different, yeah. right? That KG's a good one. I, would you say? This this is saying a lot though, but imagine Scotty Thompson yeah. in America training. Like, like a lot of the tweeners, like even Arvin Tolentino, uh, just Ar oh oh no, he yeah yeah like, skill work. Yeah, Ar guys, Arvin's like up Mac there Bello, too. Mac Bello, Mac Bello would have been good. How about Tro Troy Rosario? Troy would be playing the three. Yeah, like there's there's the yeah yeah that yeah. It's really just the. I think we just named every tweener. <laughs> yeah. I guess that kind of just wiped out any conversation. That yeah. Had. Just no, but that's a good one, though. But yeah, that is I mean, a good one. I mean, could, would you, how about like Jap? Because Jap came to college out here, yeah. but at that time, he, you know, he was already a little bit older, kind of, right, right, I don't right. want to say stuck in his ways, but I mean, imagine if Jap would have came out here Earlier? high school. Yeah. I just think he had some bad luck, too. Yeah. yeah. I think he had injuries. He had an college. injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. He went to a school. He went to Western Kentucky. was like just on their come up, too. Like yeah. They started having, Courtney Lee was his yeah, team. Like yeah. They started having really good teams. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know how college is in the States, man. It's tough. Once you... Once you get behind the eight ball a little bit and you're kind of fighting uh, your way back done, into yeah, the no, it's, position, yeah. it's, it's tough to get back on. Yeah, that's really hard. So, that's really tough. That's really yeah, tough. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys. No, there's, yeah, there's some. That there's speaks, some. That speaks to Philippine basketball as a whole. Mm -hmm. To legit say that there's probably how many guys this dude made it three. Who, oh? Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's one question. Actually, we'll shoot that over to JD, Saul, and Tin. Yeah, see what you guys think Who on that. Who would you have loved to see play in NCAA Division One, Division Two? Don't even matter. Just continue to build their careers, possibly stateside before getting into the PBA. And everybody's yelling. I don't know. There's a lot of noise going on. I don't know if you even hear the question. <laughs> I'm sure they hear the question. Hear the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys hear. You guys hear the question. But yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's another episode of Let It Fly coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. I'm Gabe Norwood. This is your boy JDV, Joe DeVance. Let It Fly. I didn't know what he was going to do right there. Yes, yeah. <laughs>